What's up guys, it's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down some of the best advice that I have for shorter wide receivers. So we're going to be talking about how you guys can get separation against bigger physical linebackers, how you guys can attack a certain DB's leverage, and improve your football IQ to make you more successful when you are undersized. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also fellas, if you're a wide receiver, I'm sure you've heard about this, but we are traveling out to two more states this offseason for two day long QB and wide receiver training camp. So if you guys are local, to the Salt Lake City, Utah area or the Los Angeles, California area and would like to get some work in with us, we're going to be coming out there on the 15th and 16th and the 30th and 31st of July. So if you guys want some more information on that, would like to travel out, whatever it might be, we always appreciate the support and you guys coming out from our YouTube community. Check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you. Let's get started with this video. So one of the main keys as a short wide receiver, you see guys make a career out of it. You know, Wes Welker, Julian Nettleman, you see guys like Hunter Renfro, nowadays. They're making careers out of knowing how to attack coverage, how to beat a DB with football IQ. That's pretty much at the end of the day what it is. Football is a big man's game. There's a ton of guys across the field. They're six foot four plus. And if you're on the shorter side of things, it can be a little bit intimidating and you maybe won't be as successful if you don't know what to do. But as a shorter guy, we have to fall in love with the details. We have to love the details of the position. We have to know how to get open, not necessarily just, okay, I'm bigger and faster than you, I'm just going to run around you. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's play this route full speed. This is wide receiver Casey Martin out of Southern Mississippi. He's running a dig route versus inside shade off man coverage. So this is a situation a lot of people panic in. Let's play this thing full speed. So he goes at this DB, attacks his leverage, and he takes an outside release on an inside breaking route. Now, not only is this route realistic to a real game scenario, this is something you can use in a real game scenario. So inside leverage, right? Let's talk about why the DB is playing this way, number one. DB is playing inside shade because he's trying to take away the inside. So he doesn't want you to run a dig. He doesn't want you to run a slant. He is trying to force you outside. He's in straight up man-to-man -man coverage. The sideline is his help. So when you're coming off on this route, a lot of wide receivers, what they will do when this guy's inside shade and they have an inside route, they will attack his leverage and then they just force the inside release. Now, here's the problem with that. Let's say, for example, you're a slot wide receiver, and let's say you're running a dig. Let's say the concept is like post dig, and then backside you have a drag. If you force the inside release on this play, and you get forced all the way to the inside of the field, you're going to run into linebackers, you're going to be running into other routes, and the spacing of the play is screwed. So that is not a realistic route. You see it all the damn time in one-on-one, -on -one, seven on seven, that receivers will force these releases, and they end up catching the ball in the opposite hash. Oh yeah, that looks sick when it's one-on-ones, but in a real game, that is not going to matter and that is not going to help you. And if you force a release as a shorter guy, you are going to get manhandled by a bigger, more physical linebacker because his sole responsibility is to protect the inside of the field. Do not give up the inside of the field, force you outside. So Martin understands that. And this is what a lot of wide receivers need to understand. Now, where guys struggle with is not taking the outside release because that's pretty easy. He's inside shade. Okay, I'm going away from his leverage. That's fine. I'm taking what he gives me. So they'll attack his leverage. They'll work back outside. But this is where they screw up because they don't know what to do at the top of the break to be able to create separation. So you guys automatically need to have a plan out there, a plan of action on every single route. Because if you don't and you're trying to think about all this stuff as the game is going, you're going you're gonna to play that crap, just straight, plain and simple. That's how it's going to be because you're thinking too much. You obviously can't overthink and you have to play fast as a receiver. So you've got to have a plan for this stuff going in. That's why seeing these different kinds of coverage looks are so important. So when I have an inside shade guy and I got to run an inside route, I could do one of two things. I could either work to restack like he does, gives a move and look at that. I have spacing now on the route. I'm not running into other defenders and I'm not locked up and getting manhandled and rerouted because I took what this DB gave me. Now, what if he plays it well? That's the thing that a lot of people ask. Well, what if I can't restack? You've got to have a plan for that. So if he's running hip to hip with you downfield, what do you think something you could do? You could throw, swat him by. So you would take your left hand, swat him by on his shoulders, swat him by on his hips, and slip back underneath. But the main thing is you kept spacing and you didn't get jammed by forcing a release and getting rerouted. So as a shorter wide receiver, fellas, you have to take what the DB gives you. We want to operate in open space. As a shorter guy, you're probably naturally on the 
quicker side. So you have to make sure that we are taking what the DB gives me, I'm operating in space, and I'm giving my QB space to throw me open. Make your routes, make your releases realistic when you're in these one-on-one -on -one situations because that's what will apply to an actual game. Okay, fellas, so let's play this thing again full speed one more time. Great job by this receiver attacking him, giving that move, and then breaking over the middle. So now let's talk about this situation. So this is how you would get open against maybe like a more bigger physical guy as a shorter wide receiver. So... Same situation. He's going to be running an out route, and he's got outside leverage, okay? So main thing is when you have an out route against outside leverage, cannot force the outside release. This is where so many young wide receivers go wrong, so many shorter wide receivers go wrong because what they will do is they will widen way out. They'll try to run around this guy. DB will get hands, and he will squeeze you all the way to the sideline. You'll have no space, especially against bigger guys who want to get hands on the shorter guys. So as a shorter guy, quickness is my game. That's what that's my strength. I want to play to my strengths as a shorter guy, but I can't be afraid of contact. So let's play this thing full speed. So what he does a great job of here is attacking the leverage of the DB and then being able to work inside to give the QB space. Did not force the release as you can see. So when we have outside leverage, we obviously know why see outside leverage to prevent anything outside. So he wants to prevent the out route, wants to prevent the fade. Very similar to what we talked about with inside leverage. But now, his my plan of action off the line, this is where that football IQ comes into place when you're going up against these defenders who are bigger, better athletes. How you can beat them is with that like chess match. So he's outside leverage. How do I get him to move? Attack him where he doesn't want me to go. He's outside leverage because he doesn't want me to go outside. So I come off the line. It doesn't need to be. There are a million different releases you could use. He uses kind of this like double jab to the outside. But hey, we're trying to make it look like I'm running to the outside. Head and shoulder fake. I'm trying to step outside of his frame because that will get him to hold it. That'll get him to hold his leverage. We're not afraid of contact. We're getting into his cushion. And then that gives me a free inside release. So that's what a lot of receivers will do too. They'll take what I'm saying. They'll say, oh, well, he's outside leverage. I'm just going to take what he gives me. But here's the thing. This DB is outside leverage because he's completely all right with you just running to the inside. Because what does he usually have inside? Safety help. Now, I know this is one-on-ones before everybody says anything, but... In a real game scenario, when you have outside leverage, you will have some kind of help to the inside on the defensive side of the ball. So if you just take off and go run, he's going to get hands, especially being a bigger guy, and he's going to be real physical and force you all the way to the inside to his help, which would be a safety or maybe a backer dropping into coverage. So we cannot just run. We have to threaten him in some way off the line to give me that free release to the inside so I don't get squeezed inside and I can maintain spacing on the play and timing with my QB. So that's what Martin does right here. Does a great job of that. Attacks his leverage and then what does he do? You got one of two decisions right here. You could either restack and give a move at the top, which he does, or if he's playing it super well, you could swat him by with your left hand at his shoulder or at his hip to slip underneath. But point, fact of the matter, we gave the QB space with the inside release and because I didn't run and get jammed off my ass, I didn't screw up timing with the quarterback as well. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time. That is elite route running here by Casey Martin, showcasing how a shorter wide receiver can get open against a bigger physical guy by trusting their release and taking what the DB gives them. Okay, so now this is a clipper. This is a catch from Wes Welker. I just wanted to show this because I feel that a lot of wide receivers who are on the shorter sides are put into this situation where you're in tight coverage, you have to make a close catch, and I think having late hands is something that you want to develop when you're on the shorter side of things, especially if you want to stand out to a college coach. So let's play this thing full speed. So Brady throws this fade ball over the shoulder. You see how late Welker's hands are. So usually... As a shorter guy, going up against bigger DBs, linebackers, safeties, or whatever it is, and they're trailing you on like an over-the-top deep route. They're usually got yeah, pretty long arms, going to try to be physical, going to try to make a play. So when it's an over-the-shoulder catch, you see it time and time again, receivers show their hands too early. So that ball will be coming in the air, and they'll lift their hands up trying to go catch it at its highest point, even when it's over the shoulder. Underthrown, different story. You want to go up and get that ball if you can. But when it's over the shoulder and you don't lose any speed, you're right in stride. You want to trust your eyes 
and be late with your hands. Because you see, this DB is not playing the ball. He is playing us. He's watching for my hands to go up. So as soon as he sees his hands go up, what do you think he's going to do? Try to play the hands and rip the ball out. But if we wait till the last second and I am late with my hands and my eyes track that thing all the way down, and it's pretty much just like letting it fall right into a bucket, that DB has no chance to react and to play my hands. Because again, fellas, if he's a bigger physical guy and you guys both go up for a ball and he gets a chance to rip the ball out, he probably will because he's a bigger dude. So you guys can have the advantage. If we're late with my hands, I trust my eyes and I'm not giving that away too early that that ball's coming over the shoulder. So that's just one little thing that I feel shorter guys can do a little bit better job of sometimes, especially when they get those deep opportunities to convert, be late with those hands. Don't give the DB time to react. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Brady dropping that ball in there, but also great job by Welker finishing off the play by having those late hands. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If uh, you guys got any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. Always great to hear from you guys. You guys help keep this channel rolling, so we definitely appreciate it. And again, fellas, if you'd like to come out and get some work in with us in two different states this remainder of our off season, we're coming out to Salt Lake City, Utah, and Los Angeles, California. So check out that very first link below if you guys are local to there and would like to work with us. I'll see you guys next time.